Alley Cat. Got back up no farther. We live and rolling. Alley Cat. Alley Cat. Yeah, I just did an interview with you and your uh, your husband, boyfriend. Are y'all married? No, no, we're not married. Okay, yet. with your boyfriend five years. Mm -hmm. Then I did an interview with him. I said, man, let me go ahead and say the best for last. <laughs> Alley Cat seemed a little, a little bit more energetic. Yeah. Then uh, Mike, but he was, but he got a good story. Smart man, your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The last interview, it was like a couple's interview. This interview right here, I want to go on with more detail about you, get to know you outside of that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but for the new people who, who may not have seen that video, tell me your name, your age, and where you're from. Alley Cat, I'm 43. I'm from um, Maryland, D.C. area, and I've um, been in Greensboro for about eight years. Okay. Alley Cat, 43, from Maryland. Uh, let's, talk, let's, let's get to know you a little bit. Let's talk about your childhood. Did you uh, grow up in a two-parent household? I grew up in, um, my mother and my stepfather um, mm -hmm. raised me, and I, I grew up with my um, brother and sister, which were my half-brother and sister. Um, and then I, I met my biological father when I was 32, and he was dying of cancer at that wow. time. And um, and then a month after that, my stepdad died of cancer. So um, it's just been my brother, my sister, and me um, since then. And then I met, at my biological father's funeral, I met two more brothers and a sister. That were all half brothers and sisters that I didn't know. Yeah, same didn't father. Know. Same father, but I didn't know about him. Um, mm. We don't really have a relationship or anything though. So. Okay. So, um, oh wow, how you, how you, how would you say your childhood was? Any, any trauma? Trauma? Uh, My mother was an unmedicated schizophrenic. Right. Um, and uh, so it was, it was a little weird coming home from school. You didn't know what kind of mood she was going to be. If she was going to be cooking or coloring or beating the shit out of me, like it was just a. Toss up in the air. <laughs> so sometimes she would just blank out and, and put her hands on you for no reason. Yeah. All right. Um. Dang. So um. You finished high school? Um. I I had a scholarship coming out of um coming out of middle school actually. I was in, in a, basketball? a magnet program. No, it was an academic scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> I Everybody said basketball. always said I should play sports. Cause you're tall, man. Hey, look. You talking about you five eleven? I think you about six one. <laughs> and five eleven. Five eleven. Yeah. Okay, so you had an academic scholarship. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did for the University of Maryland. And um, so we moved from Frederick, Maryland to College Park, which is where the University of Maryland is, and mm -hmm. um, you know, to prepare for that. Um, still had to do high school, but I was supposed to take high school credits. I mean, college credits in high school. I would have come out of high school with, with um, credits for college already. Um, but that didn't actually happen because I ended up um, on drugs, um, lost my scholarship, got pregnant, dropped out um, in 10th grade. And, um, you know. So in 10th grade, um, when you got pregnant, you was already on drugs at that time? Mm -hmm. What type of drugs was you on back then? Um, I started, I did the um, marijuana, and then it went from alcohol, and then cocaine, and then crack, and then, like, it just, I, I did the, the textbook. But back then in high school, it was just alcohol, marijuana, or was it cocaine? No, it was cocaine. It was oh, cocaine, that in 10th grade? Yep. Oh, you just and hit then, the scene. So you, 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 you hit the ground running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. Like, a lot of times it, it takes years to go, the, 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 you know, trans, transition from the marijuana, alcohol, to the cocaine. I grew up in um, Frederick, which is um, it's a lot of farming out area there. So when we moved from Frederick to College Park, it was, mm -hmm. um, it was a big difference. Right. Um, so I kind of just, I, I kind of hit the ground and was like, oh, what's that? I want to try that. I want to try that. Never seen that before. Try that. Like, okay. Well, that's a dick. I'll try that. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Okay. That's what's going on. Um, so you had, you had a kid in 10th grade. That's the only child you got? Um, no, I have four. Yeah, four. Mm -hmm. So they're 23, 22, 18, and 14. Okay, fourteen. Um, was you did the, the drugs during the, all your pregnancies or any of them? Um, I didn't use during my pregnancies. None and, of them. Um, there was two. Two of them I went to rehab during the pregnancy, so okay. I wouldn't use. Um, That's good. You know, just to, so I wouldn't. I never had a baby that was um, tested positive for drugs at the hospital. Okay. Or anything like that. I, did, did you raise your kids? Yes. All four. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, that's great. Um, any um, have any like substance abuse problems? Um, actually, my my young my youngest daughter, um, she did completely the opposite. Like she saw me struggling. Right. Um, she seen me in and out, out of jail and out of prison, and you know she did completely the opposite. She's gone to um, nursing college, and um, we actually don't talk right now. So. Right, that, that's how I be. I grew up around alcohol, and that's why I say I don't drink. I don't do. I don't do nothing. Right. Because I, I I seen what it do. There's only two ways you can do it. You can either do exactly as your parents do, <laughs> right. or you do completely the opposite. Right. It's, I went the opposite. Right. I ain't never like alcohol my entire life. I think because I've seen it all my life. Right. Um, so um, let's move forward. Um, you ever been married before? Yes. 
I'm um, married one time. Um, it was my high school sweetheart. We got married. Um, we met in ninth grade, and um, we were off and on for 15 years. We were married for um, 13 years, and um, we had two kids together. So two of your kids about him. Um, that uh, your addition have anything to do with y'all separating? That was basically the only reason we separated. Um, like we we used in um, high school alcohol, weed. But um, at the end of the day, he, he got up one day and said he didn't like his money going to the drug dealer's pockets. So right. he said, we don't use anymore. And I was like, oh, we don't use anymore. <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, and so the, over the 14 years, um, it was a whole lot of like sending me to rehab to fix me. And, um, and then me covering it up until it blows up, because it always does. Like when you're covering it up, you, you, you try to spend and, and you know, save and then take from this and do that. And eventually it's going to blow up, like right. it always does. <laughs> right. Kind of like bar from Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying, but um, let me ask you something. At your lowest point, um, talk about your lowest point in your addiction. Um, okay, so my husband had got up and gone to work. He, he had worked in D.C., so it was like two-hour drive up mm -hmm. and back. Like, so he left at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Kids didn't have to get up until about 6.30, 7 o'clock to get ready for school. So I had three hours before you know, I had to do anything. Right. So I had been up all night smoking crack. Of course, I hopped in bed before his alarm went off so I could act like I was asleep. Mm -hmm. And then he got up and left, and like, I just wanted to calm down. So I wasn't on heroin at the time, but I had some. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and did some, and I OD'd. And um, I laid on the kitchen floor for three hours before my youngest son woke up, who then woke up my other son, and then woke up my daughter, who was starting nursing um, classes. So she had done mouth to mouth on me until the paramedics got there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I woke up on the way to the hospital because they actually had to defibrillate me. Like I had laid there that long and I was pretty much dead. Um, and so when I came to, me and my husband had done this cycle for 14 years. So the main thing I wanted to think was like, I have to go get my stuff because he's either going to burn it or he's going to, I just, I just kept thinking, I kept telling him I have to go, I have to go get my stuff because my husband's right. going to come home from work and he's going to kick me out and like everything's just fucked now. I got to go. <laughs> and. Um, so the hospital kept telling me that I need to stay because you know they defibrillated me like that I could go back into um, into like OD. A lot of shit could go wrong, but I told myself, well, let me call my husband then. Mm -hmm. So they brought me a phone, and I he answered the phone. And he said, "What are you calling me for?" And I said, "I don't know." And he said, "You're dead to me." So I hung up the phone. And I said, Just "Give me the paperwork. I gotta go." <laughs> so I left the hospital with my night robe and my and my no shoes, anything to get to the house, so I could go get my stuff together because I already knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. Um, and at this point, like, we've done it cycle before, but like, mm -hmm. you're dead to me, like, that's pretty, like, you can't go back from that. Right. Like, you know, when you're dead, dude, just, I mean, those words, just, they, they just don't come, you can't take them back. So at that point, like, I took what I could. He got there, and um, the cops, the cops were called, like, they've, they've been called in the past to, to break us up from fights and stuff. And um, I left that day, and uh, I haven't been back. <laughs> so he, you thought it was best for the kids to stay there with him? To stay there with him. When you left, you, you didn't leave with the kids, did you? No, no, I didn't. No, the kids stayed with him. Right. Um, My daughter had to rearrange her life. She was going to start college. She had applied to one college. Mm -hmm. She had gotten into that college. And she had to cancel that because she stayed back to, to help him with the boys. Right. Every time I talk about them kids, you'd be, you be ready to bust out crying, huh? I get it. <laughs> I know how it is. Um, let's, let's move on past that. Um, so well, my mother was living in North in Turnersville at the time because this mm -hmm. is all happening in Maryland, um, and I was on the street like a housewife, like I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I came up here um, just to, my mom said we'll help each other because you know, my dad's not around anymore. That didn't last very long. So, but that's what that's what got me into Greensboro actually. Oh yeah. So um, after um, you left you left your man. And you packed your stuff and left. Was you homeless right then, or did yeah. you, you went you went from your house from the hospital home and get your stuff to living on the street? Yeah. So how was you support? How was you supporting your habit on the street? Um. At that time. I didn't know how I was going to support anything. I had just I, I mean at that point I was on disability. I had just gotten approved for it. Took um, it took a long time to get um, approved for it, and he actually did help me do that because you can't work when you're trying to get mm -hmm. a disability and everything. I have a long history of psychiatric problems back from when I was like 14 all the way back, like a long history of suicide attempts and a long history of um, just 
mood disorders and, and everything that goes along with it, drug addiction, um, um, dual diagnosed, you know. So um, at that point, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I, I waited for my check to come. Come on, 1012 is going to be on the other side over there. Um, I waited stop, for my check to stop, come. You're going to stop the interview. <laughs> I waited for my check to come that month, and I got myself a ticket, a bus ticket here, and um, I ended up at my mom's, which I knew wasn't going to work out very well. We don't get along very right. well. We didn't get along when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Didn't get along very well here either, but um, I didn't really have anything else to do. <laughs> so right. um, she, I started posting on Craigslist when I got here, mm -hmm. um, and at first I was just posting for like friends. Come on, you know, since you've been with, with your new guy? I haven't. I hadn't met him yet. Okay. So I was just like, I'm in new in a new area. Anybody want to go out to dinner? Any friends? Anything like that? Um, because obviously, when you're a woman on the street, you get propositioned like all the time. For sex. All the time. Oh yeah. Have you ever did it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the easiest thing to do. Either way, you support your I mean, It gets you money like instantly. It's, it, you know what I mean? Like, and people will provide you housing. They'll, they'll do whatever, but. At the point that you don't want to have sex, right. all that's gone. Right. The housing, like the room, like whatever they've given you, it's all gone as soon as you don't feel like having so, sex. As soon as you say no. Yeah, as soon as you say no, it's gone. <laughs> it's, <all. laughs> it's gone. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll do anything for you as long as you're still doing what they want. As long as you're saying yes. But if you if you got a headache or you don't feel like it, it's oh, all gone. <laughs> it's all get out. You can't get out. <laughs> it's gone real quick. So, I get it. Um, so pretty much um, going doing the just friends and stuff like turned into posting on Craigslist pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I had um, posted online just to get out of my mom's house, um, trying to figure out what I was gonna do. I ended up staying with a guy at a four bedroom house in Brown Summit. And um, a month into that, my ex-husband actually called me, told me he made a mistake and um, that he didn't want me to be dead to him anymore. And I told him that like, you know, can't take it back. Right. Everything's happened and that, too much has happened now for us to go back. Like, you know what I mean? So I just, I told him it wouldn't happen. Right. And he did at one point have the kids call me and say that, um, like, he said, that he had the kids tell me, like, why don't I want to come home? Why don't I love them? And it wasn't about them. But he wasn't never going to be able to fix me. Right. So I just told him it wasn't going to work. You're fucking too far gone by then. Yeah. Right. Too much had happened even since leaving. You know what I mean? Like, it's, he would have never forgiven anything that happened since then either. You know what right. I'm saying? It wasn't ever going to be able to fix me. You know, have, you, have you ever tried to fix yourself? You have myself and everything, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've successfully sustained, like, when, when I was pregnant. I, I didn't use when I was pregnant, like, mm -hmm. um, you know. But as far as, like, staying completely drug-free, I just don't see it happening. Um, my mind does too much, like, all at once, and my mind races, and um, it helps. It's a medication that it, it's self-medicating, but right. it does help. And um, I'm, I'm very determined to try to find a way to to make life work with the drugs. You, you, don't, want drug. you, don't, want, you don't want to give up the drug. You don't want to give up the drug. You like you like getting high, right. but you, but you also want to want to live a better life than you're living now. Right. So you want you want you want to try to find a way to control the drugs to to whereas it won't keep you homeless and selling yourself and, and ruin other relationships. Yeah. I get that. A lot of people say that. I don't know how I don't know how you're gonna do it, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, I get it. Um, I like to, I like to see you get yourself clean. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna be right here with you. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk on a regular basis. Um, hopefully, talking to somebody, adding somebody positive to your life. Because hmm. you know, a lot, a lot of times people that be doing drugs, everybody they talk to is is is, is addicts. Or, or, or in their lifestyle, they they will never get a chance to talk to nobody like me. Mm -hmm. A sober person, they care. Um, somebody want to get you off of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The only time they talk, the only time they hear that, hear that is when they talk to their mom. Yeah. Or somebody who who hasn't gave, given up on them already. Right. But I'm gonna be here. But um, I appreciate I appreciate your time. I think from, from, I think when you, when you ended the story at is where we pick we, we, where you and your, your new boyfriend. Pretty much close to it. Cl yeah. yeah, I get it. So um, before before I end this interview though, I do want you to get some advice. To somebody that, that's thinking about choosing a lifestyle or some youth, what type of advice would you give get them not to choose a lifestyle? It is, it's not a lifestyle that's for everybody, and, and a lot of people don't make it out of here alive. Um, just don't, just if you've got family that'll help you or friends that'll help you, um, just, just, I wouldn't say like just 
don't do drugs because there's a lot of people that can do drugs and not pick it up like every day and not have to go through all this stuff. But like 95% probably. Yeah, do. but I'm gonna I'm I'm tell them not to do drugs. Yeah. You, you, you want to tell, you tell, tell me it's okay, don't try to control it. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it ain't, it ain't okay. Don't touch it. Don't touch no marijuana for the first time. Don't touch no alcohol or none of that. Period. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, hate, I hate to cut in on that, but I, but, but I, see, I see what you're about to say. <laughs> I, had, I had to go ahead and stop it. But I do got a donation for you, and we're going to continue to talk. So hopefully by the time I get through working with you, when I tell you the end of interview next one one day, you're gonna you're gonna be like, man, I don't, I, I, I don't grew. I'm, I'm changing. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. God bless you. I was getting to it. <laughs> <laughs>